Hello, my name is Nancy Allis, and I've been a parishioner at St. Clement for about 11 years. So as Father Ken was saying, prayer is the most important connection we all have to God after the Eucharist. And for me, it's been a life raft, a safe place to land, and Jesus' loving arms to hold me as I've met the joys and challenges of life. But before I talk about my prayer life, there's somebody I have to thank, and that's my prayer giant. I think I read that term from something Matthew Kelly wrote, but the general idea is that every family should have a prayer giant, someone who is dedicated to prayer in general and prays for their family on a regular basis. When I read that, I knew immediately who ours was, Grammy Curley. I know her prayers and example of faithfulness over my lifetime are part of what brought me here today. So my own prayer life started out in a very ordinary way, learning the prayers in our tradition and saying grace before meals with my family, things like that. That journey, though, took a very significant turn when my mother died suddenly of a cerebral hemorrhage when she was 52 and I was 30. We were extremely close, and the pain and grief of that loss felt almost unbearable. I was working at a demanding job in New York at the time and remember sharing a taxi home from the airport with a stranger not long after my mother's passing. I can't remember the course of our conversation, but she spoke to me about meditation and casually threw out the line, you know, be still and know that I am God. That lit something inside of me and I bought a book on Catholic contemplative prayer and started to teach myself to be still. I know I probably would never have had the motivation to do this work without the pain and suffering I was feeling from my loss. It was a powerful catalyst to find some peace and relief. For me, stillness and contemplative prayer opened a door to a completely new and very deep feeling of closeness to God and his abiding love for all of us that is very difficult to put into words, but I'll try. Through the grace of his love, I discovered tremendous peace a sense of relief, and even more incredibly, wisdom and guidance I needed to keep moving through the world in a state of peaceful acceptance and even joy without my mother. I had no idea that all of this was possible simply by making myself quiet enough to hear and sense God's presence. So contemplative prayer and meditation became the mainstay of my prayer practice from then on. To release the chattering in my own mind and sense the vast expanse of peace once that chattering settles down, for me is like sitting in, in God's sky, being deeply warmed by his ab abiding presence of abundant love. For me, it's a form of adoration. This sense of stillness in the presence of God was the roadmap out of another detour in my life that surfaced about the time I turned 40. I was working still and traveling quite a bit for my job, when I developed this intense and debilitating fear of flying. I can even remember firmly deciding that I would not fly home to Chicago for Christmas to see my family. But my desire to see them and the pressing demands of my work meant that using cars and trains as my main modes of transportation were really not practical. I also knew from my prayer life that the feeling of fear I was experiencing was nothing like Jesus. In fact, it was the opposite. Just as he brought me through the most difficult moment in my life, I knew he could bring me through this too. I used two forms of prayer to ask for his help. First, in calming my own mind, I could begin to feel his peace in the midst of the storm in my own heart. He taught me in that stillness to recognize and feel the absolute wellness of just the single tiny instant I was living right at that moment. All is well, all is well, all is well. Stringing each moment of absolute wellness together one by one helped me get through each flight. I also created a more regular prayer to say before a flight. It goes like this. Lord, please bless all of those who travel today and please get us all to our destination safely. Of course, I'm speaking to you here today, so, so far, so good. <laughs> but there's more to the story. After I had moved back to Chicago, my fear was more or less under control. One day, it happened to be on the anniversary of my mother's passing, 
I was waiting to board a flight to LaGuardia to join my husband for a brief stay in New York. As is my custom, I had said my flying prayer before I even got to the airport. It was a beautiful day here and in New York. When I arrived at O'Hare, the flight was on time, but then it was delayed, then delayed again. We learned before we boarded that a US airplane had landed in the Hudson. My, amazingly, my immediate reaction was not terror. It was to pray even harder. It wasn't long before we learned that, thankfully, all the passengers and crew were safe. That moment gave me such profound joy, and I know that God likely used that moment to bolster the faith of many besides me that day, and that gives me profound joy, too. Experiencing this pandemic and all the unsettling news that seemed to come nonstop this year has been so trying for us all. The world has at times felt turned on its side, all the familiar forms of connection with our extended families, communities, and even for a time, the Eucharist, was so very isolating. Again, though, God's grace opened up new prayer horizons for me during this difficult time. There's been so much to pray for, and especially being physically separated from family and friends has meant that the many ways we show them our love have been paused for now, but not prayer. The gift of this time for me is that I have thought of the people I love with greater intention, speaking to God about them with even more specificity. Jesus has already shown me over and over again that he is listening, and I have begun to, begun to listen to him in a new way by praying with scripture. I read the daily mass readings every day and have come to find that as necessary as a healthy, balanced breakfast. Even better though, Father, Peter told us about an app he was using in an alpha course I took over the summer called The Bible in One Year. I started it this past July. Wow. If meditation and contemplative prayer is finding the comfort and rest available to us in the vastness of God's peaceful, loving sky, reading the Bible every single day in order is, for me, finding his sacred ground and planting myself there. It's his straight and sure road. There's something amazing about hearing it instead of sitting alone and reading it. And the wise commentary provided um, by Nikki Gumbel helps put each section into context and stirs my thinking and prayer. I truly look forward to it every day. That time for me is sacred. If you haven't signed up for the Bible in One Year program with Father Peter, I highly recommend it, and I'm sure it's not too late to join. God bless you all, and thank you, Grammy, for showing me that a richer prayer life is possible, and the rewards are priceless. I love you.